call, folks. Hello my fellow artists and crafters, my name is Annie and welcome to my channel today. In this video I'm going to show you how I make this really, really awesome kind of whimsical, kind of steampunk, really, really fun pins. Now I absolutely love these. These look so cool on a denim jacket as you saw in the beginning of this video. You can actually also make these into really cool mac. So let's talk about some of the materials that we're going to need. The beauty about this project, guys, is that you can put anything you want in these pins or magnets or even if you want to do them in the style of a coaster. So whatever your style is, go ahead and put those kind of items. So whenever I can't sleep at night, my brain just kind of like goes and goes and goes and goes. I like going on the Amazon app and I just start randomly searching for literally random things. I start with one thing and I go deep, deep, deep in the internet hole and I just find all sorts of random things. So one day I looked up vintage keys and that's how this started. So I looked up the keys and I got these really cool little, you know, they look kind of romantic, kind of old, kind of steampunk. And then I found dials. After the dials, I looked up and I found dried flowers and lemons. And then I got some twine and then I put some gold leaf. And anyway, so you can put whatever you want in these pins. That's the moral of the story. So let me show you the things that I'm going to use. Okay, so this is one of the things that I bought on Amazon a while ago. So um, I'm going to look it up and hopefully I can add it to my store for, for you guys. But it's called Gold Leaves Leaf Ribbon Trim. So just the trim that has little leaves on it. What I like to do is just cut off the little leaves. And it's really cute, kind of shimmery. And there's a lot of it. So you buy one, you're going to have it forever, which is fantastic. So I use this. So once again, I love buying these little keys and they have all sorts of different ones. This is one of the bigger ones that I'm going to show you just for the purposes of this video. And they have small sizes, big sizes, all sorts of different styles. And then, come on, come on, come on. Oh, cute. Cool. So I love these dials and this is what makes the pieces look really steampunky. So they're these cool dials and again the package has a bunch of different dials, a bunch of different sizes and colors. So whatever your style is, whatever you want to use. Some twine. So again, just off of Amazon. So I was looking up dried kind of flowers and roses and the coolest thing popped up. Little packages of flowers and dried lemons and fruits for your tea. And I thought, oh my god, genius, right? So I, again, just on Amazon, search for dried lemons, dried roses, and flowers. And I'm going to hopefully find these again on Amazon because I bought them a while ago. And I will put them in um, a storefront for you guys. So if you find it there, you can buy the package and they'll all come together. All right, so the most important material you need is your resin. Guys, I've been absolutely obsessed with countercultures resin. I've been using it for about a year now, maybe a little bit more than that. The thing I love about them is they have more than one kind of resin. So they have an artist resin, which you use to seal your projects. If you have a painting or a wood piece that you're working on or the back of your bookmarks or your little coasters or pieces, just like I've shown you before. But they also have casting resin, which is for when you want to draw pieces into them. If you want to do your alcohol ink, um, this collage that we're going to be doing now. I love them. They, they're they so versatile. They have pigments, they have glitter, they have 3D Crete, which is like kind of a concrete where you can make like 3D um, sculptures for you to paint over. What else do they have? They have pigments, they have mica, everything. Great news, guys. I'm an ambassador with them and I can give you a discount code, which is Annie's Art, for you guys to save money on anything you want to buy. First, we're going to be using the casting resin and then we're going to be using the artist's resin to seal the back of it. And guys, there's a link to their website in the description of this buy, so go ahead and click on that, use the code Annie's Art to save money, and let's get started. Now first thing you're going to need is an extra mold on the side, like this red one, where you're going to go ahead and you're going to torch your resin. You don't want to torch the resin that's going to be in the actual mold that you're going to use for your art pieces because your mold will stick to your art piece, to your resin once it's cured, and you will ruin both your mold and your resin. Now before you start your project, make sure you have all of your trinkets ready to place into your mold. Something to keep in mind is your layering. Whatever is on the bottom of your mold is going to actually be the top of your pin. Remember, we're going to take these molds out and we're going to flip them over. 
So when you're layering your pieces, the pieces you want to be on the top of your pin in the forefront, you're going to put in first and then slowly layer the items to the back. I like to start with one major piece and then slowly add different items in. Don't overthink it. This is usually really fun. It's not supposed to be stressful. So get a little bit of different colors, look different textures in there. Don't use the same of too many of the items and you're gonna have a beautiful pin. You'll see here that I shredded up the little flower petal and sometimes I put it in as a whole. So if you're gonna use a bunch of different items and it gets a little crowded but you still want to add a little pop of color go ahead and rip up that gold leaf or rip up that little flower petal and go ahead and just put little bits and pieces in there so for these three I kept them pretty simple and I decided that I wanted to add a little bit of alcohol ink in there so I went ahead and I added Jacquard products teal color which is one of their newer colors added white to help drop the color and then that little droplet that you saw was just silicone oil the silicone oil helps the ink spread around, doesn't let the ink completely fall to the bottom, and it just gives a really beautiful effect. I use the same process just with different items for the last four pieces. Here you'll see that all I'm doing is adding a little bit more resin on top of the lemons so that when the resin cures, it'll go ahead and cover all of the pieces and keep them nice and secure. Now let's go ahead and do a little bit of an unmolding. I didn't get this part on film, but you'll see now that my little pins have a gold backing. All I did was I let my pins cure for 24 hours and afterwards I took some casting resin, I went ahead and I mixed it with gold pigment and ink or you can use gold paint and I went ahead and just filled the back I made sure that the whole thing was covered and I let that cure for another 24 hours once that 24 hours was up I went ahead and now I am unmolding So let's look at a finalized piece. Now for this piece, I decided that this is the top and this is the bottom. So now let's turn this over. You'll see that I placed the pin not in the middle, but a little bit on the top. This way when you hang your pin, it's going to stay in place and not rotate. Let's look at another example. So here for this one, I would wear it this way. So once you turn it over, I would place my pin somewhere around here, just so the weight of the pin will be holding it down. 
All right, so now we have decided on our pins, where is the top and where is the bottom. Now we are going to go ahead and place them, and then very carefully without turning them, whoop, without turning them circularly, I mean, we're gonna go ahead and we are going to flip these over. I've already mixed my artist resin from Counterculture. Now I'm gonna go ahead and fill the backs. Now once you demold your pieces, guys, this edge right over here is just a little bit lifted, so it serves as a perfect framing for us to place our resin, and it's gonna hold it right into the place of it, so it's gonna be beautifully clean once we're done. So let's go ahead and start pouring our resin. So you wanna do it very little at a time, everyone, because you think you're putting just a little bit, but you know what, once that it's just a little bit over, it's gonna spill over and you're gonna ruin your piece because it's gonna to run to the other side and there's no cleaning up resin. So let's go ahead and do this. Okay, so now while that one is gonna level out, we're gonna put the rest of the resin on the other two. All right, so now we're gonna take our craft stick, and what I like to do is take the resin very carefully, bring it to the corners, or to the edge of the piece. Now your resin has a density to it, so it does something called doming. So it's not gonna spill over, but it's gonna go ahead and level out afterwards back to the middle. So do this super, super carefully, very slowly. Okay, so now I've touched all of the edges, or all of the edge, and now it's going to go ahead and level out to the middle. And I'm going to move on to my next piece. So the great thing I love about this process is at this point, you can torch this more than once, you don't have to worry about your mold sticking to the piece. We're going to torch it again one second at a time, but we can do it a couple of times over to get all the bubbles out. So let's begin. And be careful if you're on top of a paper or do not put napkin under your pieces because that will catch on fire. But you have to be careful not to set this paper on fire either. Just super quickly. And then we're going to let it be. We're going to let this sit for a minute. And then we're going to come ahead and do this one more time. So I'm going to use a pair of tweezers to help me put the little pieces on top of our pins. Okay. Here we are. Okay, so now, guys, remember we said that this is our top, right? I'm not going to place it in the middle. I'm going to place it a little bit above. So I'm going to just grab that, put it just like so. Here we go. And now guess what I'm gonna do? I want that resin piece or that little pin to be under my resin. So I'm just gonna push the resin over the base of that. And now there is no way that that pin is gonna come out once it's dry. So you don't have a fear of it popping off of your little pins. I just sounded very robotic there, sorry. Oh Lord, okay. So now let's take our handy dandy little torch just one more time and there you have it so now let's do the other two And that is it. Now let this cure, guys, for about three days. After 24 hours, you can go ahead and handle it, but I would suggest three full days for the resin to cure before you can wear them and sell them or enjoy them. So that is all. Friends, that is it for this video. Thank you so much for joining me. If you're not subscribed, make sure you subscribe. Give me that thumbs up, guys. Leave a comment and say hello. 
Thank you again, and I'll see you soon. Gold foil, what do you call I'm losing my words today. So let's talk about some of the materials. That didn't work very, that was weird. All right, a little warm, let's do it again. But you can, you know, find whichever one, look for them. This is um, babbling, babble, 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 babble. Okay, 